guys, Big D Wiz, old school stereo.com, back once again with another super powerful Chinese amplifier, the Lapai LP168HA Super Bass 2.1 car amplifier. I will be real honest with you guys, after uh, the lackluster performance of the other Chinese amps, I really was just going to stop doing these reviews because they were getting kind of boring, I know to me and you, but I noticed that uh, Parts Express has begun to sell this particular model, so I felt it was important to make a review and show everybody how this does on the bench and what you should expect. So real quick before I uh, put it on the bench, I want to show you the connections here. As you can see, there's a power switch on the left, there's a subwoofer volume, crossover, it ranges from 50 hertz to 200 hertz. You have treble, bass, and volume, and an aux input jack, it's the eighth inch. Now, right off the bat, I do not like that the volume button is so small, it's the same size as the other two. But anyway, just to show you that, and on this side, you can see the RCA jacks, which are, I believe, in parallel with the eighth inch jack here on the front. So if you um, put something in both, they're going to both play at the same time. So you kind of have to choose one or the other. There's no way to switch between them. And there's the speaker jacks. You can see the top row is for your left and right, uh, the, the two of the 2.1. And the bottom are your sub-channels, which you can parallel the, the two pluses and the two minuses to give you the one speaker jack. There's a USB, and I'll talk about that a little bit, and the power input. Now this unit does have a USB, um, and it's for power and to play like thumb drives and stuff like that. And the guys on Parts Express have said that if your phone is compatible, it will play the songs right off of your phone. Now, the iPhone 3G nor the iPhone 4 is recognized as charging through this device, but the iPod Nano is first generation iPod Nano, the one that I use to do all my tests. So you may have good or bad experiences with the USB port, so you may just want to check another review for that because I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time testing it out. Alright guys, here you go. We have the LaPai LP168HA on the old school stereo bench. And we have our usual test tools here. The Valaymon HPS50 Oscope slash true RMS meter and this SMD DD1 by Steve Mead and DMR Engineering. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna test the unloaded output of the front channels, then I'm gonna do the sub channel. So we're gonna do it at one kilohertz, test tone, unloaded voltage output. All right, here's the unloaded voltage output, one kilohertz. You see the SMD DD1 detects the one kilohertz. And watch the O scope. And watch the DD1. There we see distortion at 8.83. So let's back it down just a hair. 8.67. Looks clean. 8.67 volts. Uh, 40 hertz going in and we're going to test the sub channel and see what the unloaded voltage output of the sub channel is. You see the 40 hertz detect and I can tell you that this is extremely difficult to do because I'm barely turning it like I don't know maybe one sixteenth of a turn here and as soon as I just barely turn it you can see it's going way up. I'm having to see if I can turn it down right before distortion. 8.19. Yeah, just because it's so sensitive. Yeah. Okay, we'll go with 8.19.
before I go any further, I want to show you real quick how useless the uh, subchannels crossover is, and that how <laughs> useless the subchannel is. Period. I've got a one kilohertz signal going in to the amplifier, and maybe you can hear that. But I'm gonna—I mean, that's one kilohertz, and I'm sitting here turning crossover between 50 hertz and 200 hertz and we're still getting a one kilohertz signal coming through the sub side so that tells me that let me turn that down tells me that there may be a crossover built in but it may be like 2 db at whatever frequency it's not 50 hertz or 200 because i don't get any difference no matter how much i turn that just so you know Right now we have the one kilohertz test tone going into the front channels of the LaPi LP168HA. You can see the one kilohertz detect. And we're testing RMS wattage of the front channels. There's distortion. Let's back it down just a little bit. Looks like 7.9. Remember, this is 1% distortion, so the amp is rated, I think, at 20% or 10 or 20%, so 7.9 watts per channel RMS at 1% distortion. Okay, now we have a 40 hertz signal going in to the LaPi LP168HA, and we have a 4 ohm load on the sub-channel. I'm going to try it out, see if I can get an RMS wattage, look at that distortion immediately. You guys just don't know how sensitive this little volume knob is. Well, a little bit better than the front, so look at that. 13.03, the distortion light comes on. I'll see if I can back it down just a hair. Eleven point three five. That's what we'll go with. Eleven point three five. I thought it would be interesting to go ahead and try a max power output for the sub channel. Looks like it won't get any higher than, well, 25.60, no, 28.09. 28.09. And next up, we'll do a max power output of the front channels at 4 ohms. And just ignore the distortion detector because we're going to let it go as high as it'll go. It's like 17.3. So there we have the lab measurements. I didn't do 2 ohm or 8 ohm or anything like that. I just did 4 ohms. That's probably what most people will be using these at anyway. Gives you an idea of what it'll do. So next up, I've got my famous soundtrack in here. Jazz that everybody loves. And we're going to just play it just for a second so you can get an idea of what it sounds like. the bat I can tell you you know it's not too bad uh, about 8 watts per channel it's not as powerful as the LP uh, 2020A plus but you know it's not too bad the only problem you're gonna really have is is finding a suitable quote-unquote subwoofer that is happy with 11 watts I mean I think that's kind of useless maybe one of the little 3 inch or 4 inch subs you can get off places like Parts Express may do good I don't know I personally wouldn't use it with anything less than you know, 25 or 50 watts for a subwoofer. So anyway, there's the sound quality test. And I'm just using the internal microphone here on the iPhone. So I hope you didn't expect a whole lot of uh, you know, quality there as far as sound. Just give you an idea of what it sounded like.
And the final thing I'll show you real quick is I'm, I've got the bookshelf speaker here, the Athena bookshelf speaker hooked up to the sub channel. And I'm going to turn it up just so you can hear what I'm talking about, about the crossover. Now you can tell it is crossed over somewhere. Sounds like maybe 500 hertz or so to me. Now I'm going to turn that down so it doesn't blow my speaker because I blew the other one earlier with a different amplifier. I'm not sure if that blue light is, is a clipping indicator. Maybe. But um, again, you can hear maybe. I'm turning the crossover. Let me get it in focus. Sorry about that. There's no difference. All the way up or all the way down. I think it's about a 2 dB per octave crossover at about 500 hertz is what it sounds like to me. So that's pretty useless. But anyway, there is my overview of the LaPai LP168HA. And one more thing I failed to mention, the subwoofer volume control is completely independent of the regular volume control. So in other words, as you're turning up your volume here, it is not affecting the subwoofer volume at all, which that in itself to me is a bad design because you normally want to be able to kind of control with a master volume and then maybe have some adjustment for the sub separately, but this one is completely separate and that's a big deal to me. Do not like that feature at all. Well, there you go guys. There is a test of the LaPai LP168HA by OldSchoolStereo.com. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Sorry it was so long. Please check in the info section here for a link to OldSchoolStereo.com where I have a matrix of all the Chinese mini amps. Chinese mini amp invasion. This is Big D Wiz, OldSchoolStereo.com. I'm out of here.